Arise, man of God. Arise, woman of God. Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And greater, greater, greater am I in you than he and everything that is in the world. But if the lame walk and the blind see and cancers vanish and the power of God flows, who cares? Who cares? When I believe, Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe it shall be unto me even as you have declared. You start speaking that out of your mouth, the devil doesn't know what to do. Because finding fault with him, he says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. So I will put my laws in their mind. Oh, and I will write them in the heart. Get the difference. I'm no longer outside. I'm inside. I'm no longer doing stuff from the outside in. I'm doing it now from the inside out. I was sent to you to tell you that your days of being unproductive will end here today. If you believe it, I want your enemy to be the loudest in the building. He's paid the price. He's set you free. You are a trophy of his grace. And if he can handle your sins, he can handle the debt that you've got right now. Praise the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that, can't we? Welcome, 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 welcome. I was just about to say good evening, but you know the Bible tells us that there was evening and morning the first day. So this is, we've just entered now into a new day as the sun set. And it's a special day. It is a doubly special day because tonight at sundown begins the Shabbat. Six days you get to do whatever you need to do, but the Lord says the seventh day is a day of rest. This is a day, did you know what Shabbat means in Hebrew? It simply means this, cease, cease, Shabbat cease. So why don't you turn to someone around you and say to them, Shabbat Shalom. The peace to cease. The peace to cease. 
But tonight is also a very special Shabbat because tonight is the first night of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's called the Feast of Booths. It's also in Hebrew Sukkot, which is tabernacles. And that gives us a little bit of an understanding of what is intended by heaven. I said to you this morning or last night or maybe yesterday, I'm not really sure, that there's a promise. In Ezekiel 37, the Lord said, I'm changing my address. He said, I am coming to dwell amongst you, not temporarily. He said, I'm coming to dwell amongst you forever, forever, forever. And so tonight, we, this is a rehearsal of what is yet to come, and it is a rehearsal of a promise. I believe that the spring feasts were the first appearing of Messiah. These fall feasts signify his return, the sound of a trumpet, the repentance of Yom Kippur, and then the joy and celebration of dwelling with our king for a thousand years called the millennium. Can we give the Lord some thanks for that as we celebrate that tonight? Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 33, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month, and for seven days is the feast of booths, or tabernacles, to the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work, unless you're running sound or doing video. There's the special grace for those who help us to, to worship or playing keyboard, but that's not work, is it? It's not work. <laughs> On the first day shall be a holy convocation. For seven days you shall present food offerings to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall hold a holy convocation. That's what we're doing right now. And present an offering to the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. You shall do no ordinary work. So tonight we are doing exactly what the Lord has told us to do. Tonight I, I want to begin our time together in Jerusalem. That was a good place to go. Oh, oh. We're going to have to do that by video and audio, of course. But there is, um, just before COVID, our ministry and our team was on a hillside outside of Jerusalem, overlooking the old city. And right in front of us, there was the Mount of Olives. And we took with us instruments and singers and songs. And we brought back with us all of that and it turned into a project called Roar from Zion. I was sitting before the Lord one day, a year before this time, and I was asking him what's next. And he took me over to the prophet Joel. And in the prophet Joel, and, and Brother Morris would love this scripture, in chapter 3, verse 14, it says this, Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. And the Lord says, I will roar from Zion, I will thunder from Jerusalem, the heavens and the earth will quake. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people and a stronghold to his people, Israel. So with those words, let's go up to Zion, roar from Zion. Go ahead and roll that video.
Then Adonai said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all families on earth will be blessed through you. For I will take you out of the nations and bring you back into your own land. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord when I show myself holy through you before their very eyes. In that day, I will restore David's fallen tent. I will repair its broken places and build it as it used to be. So arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. You will call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet, till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. For I am exceedingly zealous for Zion. I am burning with jealousy for her. I will thunder from Jerusalem, and I will roar from Zion.
is Lord. Come on, sing this to him. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord over all the earth. Sing it to the throne. You are Lord. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord. You are Lord. Yeshua is the Lord over all the earth. You are Lord. Come on with all your heart. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord. Jesus is the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me, all that is within me, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. I hear in my spirit, man, the Lord saying, I'm longing to eat this feast with you. I'm longing to celebrate this feast with you. 2,000 years ago, he said that to his friends around a table just before he poured his life out. This is what he was looking forward to. He was looking past that cross. He was looking past the shame. He was looking past the pain to the celebration that we are enjoying tonight. When he returns and his feet touch down again on the Mount of Olives and every knee bows and every tongue confesses, Yeshua HaMashiach, who Adonai. When you say Adonai, our Bible translated as Lord. But it means this, you own it all. You own it all. The Apostle Paul said, even my life is not my own. It's been purchased. He owns it all, including our lives. And we are a grateful people. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and the owner of it all.
the God of Israel. Elders bow in worship as the angel voices swirl. Fragrant clouds of incense swirl around your throne of grace. Lord, we bow in worship at the brilliance of your face. And we cry, Holy, Holy, Holy is the
receive our praise Holy 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 You're the Son of our voice and say, Lord, fill us, fill us, fill us in every dry place, in every empty place. How do we thank you for the overflow, for the overflow of heaven. We cry out, God, come and fill this place. Oh, you're awesome. Hey, in power, in power, in glory. Come and feel this place. You're awesome. Oh, in power. In your power. Oh, in your glory. God. We cry out. Come and feel. Come and feel this place. Say you're awesome. I'm your awesome in power. God of power. In miracle sign. Demonstration, God, come and feel, feel. Here we are. Say you are. You're kind of power. Come and fill this house. The Lord of glory. I'm a father. Come and feel this place. The tabernacle of our heart, God. We say you are. You're kind of power. I'm a son. And rejoicing, you're awesome, God. There's a sound of freedom. There's a 
There's a sound of breakthrough. There's a sound of deliverance. There's a sound of revival. There's a sound of restoration. There's a sound of glory. Dunamis power. Miracles. Signs and wonders. We believe your word, oh God. We believe your word, oh God. Come on, somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shandalo raba seke kabar de baba seke riba santa. We'll go ahead and give Jesus a mighty hand clap of praise. Come on, the Bible says clap your hands, all ye people. It's all right to shout in the presence of the Lord. For the victory is ours because the battle is the Lord's. Lord, we thank you tonight. The battle is not ours, but the battle is yours tonight. And you are the glory and the lifter of our head. You are our bright and morning star. Wow, somebody just say, Lord Jesus, I love you tonight. Come on, give him another good hand clap of praise. We want to welcome you on Facebook tonight. We want to welcome you on YouTube tonight. Let everything that has breath praise the living God. I tell you what a presence, a tabernacle presence of the Lord that's in this place. Bishop, I'm so glad that you're here tonight. Come on, how many of you glad Bishop John Francis got on an airplane? I don't even know if he knows exactly. I know he started in London. He was in uh, Dubai. Then he was in Houston. He's here and who knows where. Pastors, one of the largest churches in Europe. And I remember the years that we were together in Earl's Court when God spoke to Brother Cirillo to take this ministry to the city of London and for many years consecutively with the help of Bishop Francis and many other of the pastors, we would see 16,000 people a night for seven nights come into Earl's Court, London to hear the gospel, to see the miracle power of God and what an incredible day that was. And I'll never forget how Bishop would tell us when he was a young man, his grandmother would take him a little, I don't like to say boy, but yeah, okay, but young, a young boy, Bishop said, a young boy. You know, Teresa never liked when Brother Srila would say when he was a young boy, she would say, you know, because he was really about 14, but you were young. And uh, his grandmother would take him uh, into the Royal Albert Hall. It's one of the most historic auditoriums in the world. It's a beautiful, incredible 5,000 seat auditorium. And God gave the ministry our annual European conference in the Albert Hall. You could not get in the place. And as a young boy, Bishop would be there on the balcony. His eyes would just be like saucers, seeing the power and the miracle working power of God. And what an impartation he has taken from this ministry and has taken it to another level. And we're so excited tonight. Brother Cirillo loved this man so very much. Would you join me in giving honor to whom honor is due? Come on, the one and only Bishop John Francis in the house. Somebody shout, I'm ready. Come on, somebody shout, I'm ready. Well, you all sound like you're ready for the move of God. Somebody give God a shout. What a powerful moment of worship. I just started to feel the presence of the Lord. The Lord is holy. There is none like unto our God. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He started it. And he's going to finish it. Oh, I wish I had somebody to clap your hands. Give him a praise. Thank you for the powerful worship. Well, you may be seated. You may be seated. I, I, I thank God for the late Dr. Mara Sorello and the impact and uh, he's had on my life and Teresa, we thank God for them. We're not worshiping them, but we thank God for the seed 
that they have planted in the earth. Amen. And um, I give God glory. I wouldn't be where I am today. As, I, as, as Greg was saying, and he's trying to make it sound good, um, I first was in the meeting with Dr. Sorello. My mother brought me. It sounds better when you say your grandmother because it sounds like I'm not that. I was a boy, a real boy, a boy probably around seven or eight. And um, I remember miracles and great things were happening and never knew that one day I would be able to minister. Look at someone say, you don't know what God's going to do in your life in the future. God can surprise you. I feel like somebody's going to get a surprise. Don't allow your age to stop you. God can do something in your life in one year. And I'm a living witness that God can turn your circumstances around in one year. And all your haters won't be able to do nothing about it. Clap your hands and give God praises. So, so I, I, I give God glory. I, 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 I am suffering from jet lag. I mean, real, real, real chronic jet lag. I was telling uh, Greg... I, I, f I was in Dubai and Dubai, you know, four hours different, I think, from the UK. And then I left from the UK, left from the Dubai, went to the UK, went into my time, then left from my time. And I was in Houston's time. And I thought, oh, cool, I'm, I'm, I got it now. And then they tell me, oh, no, 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 San Diego time is different from Houston time. I've been up all three o'clock in the morning trying to find something to do, call people read my Bible, pray, and what have you because I've been wide awake and then afterwards come back. And my friend gave me some tablets and I said, it's going to help me. I don't know what it did to me. I'm, I, uh, I, won't, I won't tell anybody, Apostle, what you did. Give me some tablets. I don't know what it is. So I'm under the influence tonight. <laughs> I said I was so tired, but I, I, I thank God because the joy of the Lord it's my strength. And, 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 and one of the things I want to say, when I'm tired, that don't stop the Holy Ghost. In fact, can I tell you a story? I was in a, a, a New York and my uncle was so happy. Me and my wife was there. They gave up their bed and they said, you can sleep in our bed. And I felt so honored that my uncle would honor me like that. He's my uncle, my mom's brother. You know, you, you respect him, but because of the anointing of my life, he says, all right, I'm going to give you my bed. Both of them, I was sleeping real good, and a demon came in the room. See, the devil don't realize sleep don't stop you from being alert. And that demon walked in the room, didn't know who was in the bed. Yes, Lord. And that demon, the moment... I felt like something was trying to come over me in my sleep. My wife said to me, she said, you just died shaking, shaking in the bed, shaking, shaking in the bed. My wife, poor thing, when she first married me, she thought I was crazy. You know, I'm just spiritual. <laughs> and I was shaking, shaking, shaking. And she said, you got up, you start speaking in tongues. And I remember feeling something leave the room. And then she said, you just went right back to sleep. Why am I saying that? Don't let the tired fool you. Because if the Holy Ghost comes in, whatever comes in the place that ain't of God, my spirit is still alert. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, my spirit is alert. Clap your hands, give God praise. Let me just thank God for all of these key leaders, great people. I see you all every year. Thank God for you, Greg and your wife. Thank God for holding up this great ministry. Thank God. We, let's give praise to God for Greg. Hallelujah. And uh, 
It's good to have a few of my friends here that's come down from whatever part of California. This is a big place somewhere from over there. And came Apostle Nathaniel and his wife is here um, with me. Hallelujah. And I thank God also he brought along someone who I knew for years who used to be in London and turned to California in person now. Amen. Her name is Prophetess Sarah Morgan. Good to have you. And um, it is good to have with me um, one of my spiritual sons. He's been one that has been taking care of working in our church. And he's here for the first time in California. He's excited um, uh, being here. And we thank God for him. Hallelujah. Gavin, good to have you in the house with me. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. <laughs> My soul loves Jesus my soul loves Jesus my soul loves Jesus bless his name hallelujah Help me say it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands wherever you are. Glorify him. Magnify him. Give him the fruit of your lips. He is worthy. We glorify you. None like unto our God. Yes, we worship you. And thank you. Your name is worthy to be praised. Dwell here. Dwell here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands, everybody. Give him praise. I would like to indulge you in a familiar text that you would be acquainted with and um, would try to see what the Lord would say. The book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17. And because of the brevity of time, I will read from verse number 41. If you would stand, if you could, just in respect in the reading of God's word. I'm reading from the King James Version. If you have any other version, don't panic, I have it too. Verse number 41, 1 Samuel 17, And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bared the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? that thou comest to me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. And then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword 
and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, <laughs> not tomorrow, this day, will the Lord deliver thee into my hand and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee and I will give thy carcass to the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth that all in the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. <laughs> It's just powerful reading it. We didn't have to say anything. Just reading it. That just, you just get blessed just reading it. Let's give you one more verse to, sh to just, just, just to complete the whole story. Therefore David ran. Sound man, can I have some more volume? Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine. Watch this. Get the picture. This small young man gets and stands upon. Some of you are going to stand on the enemy this week. The thing that's been threatening you is going to come to an end. The Bible says he stood upon the Philistine. That Philistine, by the way, of name is Goliath. And took his sword and drew it out of his sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, all the little imps and all the people who thought they were all that and a bag of chips ran for their life. I see demons running already. I see powers of the enemy getting scared. Somebody's about to come out here with victory in here. Oh, oh somebody's about to come out here with deliverance. I would like to talk to you on the subject as we're in the season of deliverance. We're in the season of, as you know, tabernacles, which means not only that God dwells, but God protects in the wilderness, in the place of our distress. And, and I, I believe that there are some people who came here because you really need to hear from God. You, you really are dealing with some situations and some of you cannot talk all the things you're dealing with. And in fact, some of you are not giving the devil all of that kind of verbiage. So you're, you're going through a whole lot. But there are some people in here need to understand you're in the season of protection. The season of the tabernacle. The season where God dwells among us. And I want you to know whatever the devil is trying to do, heaven is about to fight on your behalf. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, the Lord of hosts is with us. Hallelujah. Father, I need you now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Give us a word that will change life. Let burdens be removed, yokes be destroyed in the name of Yeshua the Christ, the son of the living God. Somebody say amen. amen. I would normally like you to stay standing, but you can be seated. I'm just going to read 1 Samuel 5 so that I can condense a few things. If you would write that down, you don't have to read with me, but just so you will understand it. The Bible says, after the Philistines had captured the ark of God, they took it to Ebenezer, to Ashdod. They carried the ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod arose early the next day, there was Dagon fall on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and put him back up in his place. But the following morning when they arose, Dagon fell on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and his hands had been broken off and they were, he was lying on the threshold. And the Bible says, only his body remained the Lord of hosts when we talk about the Lord of hosts we're talking about Jehovah's army 
Jehovah or God when regarding to having angelic forces at our command. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you need to understand that you're not alone. When we speak about tabernacle, we are talking about God. The word tabernacle, as you all should have learned, and Perry Stone was here last night. God help me. Um, you all don't like me. You put me after him. But he's a great, incredible teacher and teaches us and let us understand about the tabernacle, the tents, the dwelling place. And um, we know at this time of the year, a lot of the Jews, they come out of their houses and they're out in their back garden living and staying in tents, in booths, because it's, they're reminded how God kept them in the wilderness. The word tabernacle means a dwelling place. And so I want you to understand we're in the season where we are to understand that God has camped, camped, dwelled among us. You are not alone. Look at somebody say, you're not alone. You're not alone. Sometimes you might feel alone because sometimes when we're going through and there's nobody physically there. Uh, but you need to understand God does not leave us alone. Please also remember that when we're in any kind of battle, the devil forgets that we have someone constantly fighting for us. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, we have someone fighting for us. And all the time I keep saying to myself, if the devil had any sense, he would leave all of us alone. Because we always going to come out of this thing victorious. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I smell victory in here already. In fact, somebody, before I even finished what I'm about to say, victory is about to go to your house. And turn some things around on your behalf. Now, I don't know who I came for, but if I was you, I'd start shouting like it's already happened. I'd start praising like it's, oh, oh, yes. Woo. Hallelujah. You're not alone. You're not alone. Going through a whole lot in your life, a lot of crises, a lot of ups and downs. And most of us have come from some backgrounds and gone through some situations. People don't know what we've been through. We don't look like what we've been through. So they're confused because you look good and they don't know all hell's been breaking loose. You, you've got a smile and you just came out of divorce and they don't even know you just came out of divorce. They think you, look, you, know, you just found a new man, but they don't understand. You've gone through so much because God has been good to you. And so in the text now, as we begin to navigate, we notice here that the character that we're looking at is a man that we can always connect with. His name is David. He is one of the writers of the Psalms, the book of the Psalms, the book of Tehillim, which is the hymn book, the Hebrew hymn book of the day. It was the hymn book that they would use for worship. He's not the only writer of Psalms, but he is one of the major writers of Psalms. And he was uh, a creative person, a musical person, one uh, that had the anointing to write music. He, he, was, he was good at it. He was good at it. He was good at it. He, he, he was um, a musician, not only a musician, but let me tell you something else that a lot of people fail to talk about. He also knew how to make music. He actually made his own instruments of music. David was creative. He was creative. He was musical. He was an artist in his own right. And so as we begin to notice a few things of his background, we will notice that he was a shepherd boy. And not only was he a shepherd boy, he spent most of his time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, looking after his sheep. He's the one that wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Ah, should I talk about David? Uh, can I, should I? Uh, mm, don't get upset with me, but, but David was a very... 
a very uh, different boy. Very, very different. I, I, mean, I mean, I know that um, um, he had gone through so much. The Bible lets us know that there was obviously some kind of rejection that he had with his family. Yeah, yeah. Something wasn't quite straight about that. Um, very lonely boy. He, he loved his job as a shepherd. David loved as a job as a shepherd. And, 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 and I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to think about David on another level. And, and, and then you will get to understand what I'm thinking about. David had gone through so much rejection and separation between him and his brothers. He's the kind of one that they left in the background. And we know that many times that when we know uh, when we look at the scriptures that when uh, uh, Samuel came to anoint Jesse's sons, they invited everybody to the anointing service and laid David outside. And it was because Samuel knew that the sons that he brought was not the chosen of God. Until he turned around and said, hey, hey, Jesse, do you have another son? Say, yeah, well, I got one out there. Is it, you know, up there. Why wasn't he invited? And then invite him. He was the one that was tucked in the corner. We know, we know, we know David, 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 David had some challenges with the family. Because when we read the Psalms, we are told some stuff. Something went wrong in the family. I don't know. I'm just saying what I read. Don't hold me to it. He said something like, I was born in sin. And I know you're all spiritual, but that don't sound right to me. What was he trying to say? I was born in sin. I was shaped in iniquity. And then he talked about it was in sin his mother conceived. Oh, what sin? Oh, oh y'all still don't believe me. All right, let me give you another scripture. Never give another song he wrote. He says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord, oh, oh, is there some forsaken taking the place? In fact, we actually see some stuff going on. You didn't invite him to the anointed service, Jesse. Something, something's going on. Now, can I, can, I, can, I, can I go even further about this? Now, that must have had a psychological effect on David. Rejection messes with the psyche. David is so messed up, please. I'm going to say something. Don't get upset with me. I'm just reading it. Same Bible you read. David has a problem. David has a problem psychologically because he loves his job as a shepherd. And David looks after sheep, but he's psychologically messed up. He thinks he's a sheep. Oh, y'all don't believe me. Who writes a song, the Lord is my shepherd? I shall, unless he thinks he's a sheep. I shall not want, he maketh me to lie ground. Oh, oh I'm, I'm losing some people now. You all are too spiritual. Read the Bible, read the Bible. He's so messed up that psychologically he thinks he's a sheep. All right, you, you all still don't believe me. Still, he, he, he prefers his sheep. Who in the world will go and fight a lion and a bear? Let me talk to these lot because you all don't want to talk to me. Who in their right mind love a sheep so much that you're going to put your hands in the mouth? He don't have the same kind of love for humans like he has for a sheep. Y'all don't believe me? That's why he put Uriah at the front and kill him. He didn't mind killing. And, and let, me tell you, let me tell you something else. Y'all still don't believe me? I got, my dad says, never say anything unless you got scripture to back up what you're saying. There was a time when he killed Uriah and Nathan the prophet came and told him a story about a man that had this one ewe lamb. Mm -hmm. and how what he said about the ewe lamb and how he got treated and killed and David got upset 
and said, that person who killed a ewe lamb as a, 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 as a baby sheep, he should be killed. He was more angry about the sheep. Because in his mind, because he spent all of his life around sheep to the point that the sheep was more important than humans. And he saw himself psychologically as a sheep. In order for him to psychologically have balance about his connection because he didn't quite connect with his family. He connects himself with the sheep and he sees just like how he protects his sheep is the same way he felt God protected him. The Lord is my shepherd. Did I help you with something? And so when you begin to notice that, 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 that this David now, as we read, there is this disconnection between him and the family. Daddy owns him, but don't properly own him. The brothers own him, but don't really like him. Oh, Daddy says, your brothers has gone out to war. Here's some pack lunch. Go and give and help them. Give them something to eat while they've been out there. Because the Bible says they had been out there for 40 days being taunted by Goliath. Goliath, Goliath was taunting them. And so uh, the Bible says that he goes out there. I'm just helping you with the story. Some of you read the Bible, but you all don't know the story. I don't mean it in a bad way because we just read. And sometimes I've been brought up in classical Pentecostal church. So when I read stuff, I, I have this, these, these, these barriers in my mind that I'm not allowed to think a certain way. Because it's the holy book. It's the, it's the holy Bible. It's, it's the Bible. But there are some human things we have to extract. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, when you're down, you don't want to read Leviticus. When you're down, what book do you look to? Psalms. Can I go further with this? And so he goes there and, and, and he's going to bring a pack lunch. And while he's there, and I'm abbreviating because of time, he hears about what's going on in warfare. And about there is a giant that has been taught in the people of God and you got to understand and you understand these are people who believed in Jehovah these are people who believed in God and they have been taunted by this giant called Goliath and he hears that whoever defeats him will number one be able to live tax free and number two they get to marry the king's daughter. For those of you who are Bible readers, that, that, that's quite prophetic. That's quite prophetic because David is in line prophetically to be king. And one of the things that makes you a legitimate king, you have to marry into royalty. Lord have mercy. Are you listening to me here? And so he hears about this. He's excited and he thinks to himself, oh my gosh. Then his brothers came and said, what are you doing here? Uh, and they call him a mischief maker and call him names because, and he said, wait a second, why are you all carrying on like this with me? I'm here because I heard about something and there's a cause why I'm here. And, and ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Anytime there is an assignment on your life, jealous people will always turn up and try to move you from the cause of what God called you for. But do me a favor, sound man, just a little bit up here in volume. I know, I know, I'm black. I like a little bit loud. Uh, but look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. 
they ain't going to stop you in this season. Did you hear me? When God has assigned you to something, they will not stop you in this season. Well, by how? Woo! Woo! God will allow you to stumble on information. Stumble on something. Sometimes what God has for you, you didn't even plan it, but God puts you around some people, let you hear something because something has been assigned to your life. And anytime you know there's an assignment on your life, look at all the haters around you. They will tell you what your assignment is. All the ones that's trying to stop you is an indication that God has called you for such a time as this. Do me a favor, holler to someone on your own, say you cannot be stopped. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at them again. Say, you cannot be stopped. They try to stop you for years. They try to hold you for years. They try to lie on you. They try to hold back on you. They've done everything they possible can, but you're unstoppable. <laughs> Sit down. It's too early. It's too early. I'm just talking for now. And so, oh yes, sir. So, so now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the opposition is a sign of your assignment. Let me say this, and I'm not trying to make problems in your family. When family starts playing up, and starts making you feel uncomfortable. Don't get angry with this family. Understand there's a bigger picture and a destiny that God is trying to lead you. Can I talk to Joseph in the house? It is your family that releases your destiny. Oh, y'all don't believe that. It is the Joseph anointing, the dream you have, but God will allow your family to sell you. And they will sell you, watch this, and even they will try to kill you, but they can't kill you because destiny is on your life. Y'all don't believe me. All right, let me give you another story. The Bible says Jesus could not do much miracles in his hometown because of his family who knew him. Familiar people. The word familiar comes from the word family. There's folks who know you from when you were young, know all your mistakes, and they want to keep you in the category of what you were in the past. And that's why God sometimes has to move you out of your family for a season because they will stop the anointing or try to stop the anointing on your life. But I'm here to tell you, come on, Joseph, you're about to go to the palace. Let, let, me, let me conclude. I'm going on too long. I need to move on. I need to move on. The Bible says in the text... That when David found out what was going on, he was like, there's a cause. There's a reason why I'm here. It's not about pack lunch. <laughs> My dad thought, who shut hell am you? Excuse me, I'm sorry, I felt that. My dad thought that it was about pack lunch. But what my dad didn't realize, he pushed me in my position. There are some things that happen in your life that God has used it as a, as, a, as a way of getting you to a place. It was not about the packed lunch. 
It was about him finding his destiny. And the Bible lets us know his destiny is linked with a giant. Your destiny is linked with a giant. If you deal with the giant, the giant will bring you to your next destiny. You're anointed to be a king, but before you deal with kingship, you got to kill the giant. Can I get, I need about 50 people to praise God for all of your enemies, all of your giants. I know you didn't like it. Thank God for all of them. They're pushing you into your destiny. David said it like this. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I may learn your statutes. There are some things you don't learn when everything's going good, but when all hell's breaking loose, that's what God uses you to bring you to your destiny. So, 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 I, I, I'm talking too long. Let me hurry up. And so, and so, I want you to understand that he strategically finds himself in a situation trying to bring pack lunch. We know we don't hear anything about the pack lunch. All we hear is David says, I'm going to fight this giant. And everybody's like, this dude, man. Look at him. Never done no war program, never signed up to the military. And he's talking about, I want to kill the giant. And they kind of look at him and think, <laughs> you know. And then he says, let me give my testimony. Some of you got some testimonies that qualifies you. Look at someone next to you say, don't look at what you see out here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you might, might think I'm a walkover person. Uh-huh. I've been through too much uh, and when the anointing comes on me, I can deal with any giant, any giant. He said, let me give you my resume. I, 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 I look cute. Because the Bible says he was beautiful, fair. That's what the Bible talks about. A good looking young chap. And they were like, oh, he's so gorgeous. He is so handsome. Oh, my feet are going weak. Look at him. <laughs> but there was a worry in him. And that's the mistake the devil makes with some of you. You look cute, but they don't know there's another side to you. Come on, Serena. Come on, Kent Clark. Just let something happen. I'll change in a minute. I'll switch places in a minute. And anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Oh, I'm loving talking to you. I'm loving it. And so, and so, and so, you know, the text goes on and he gives his testimony. And then I was reading this and I was laughing to myself when I was reading this whole story. Saul says, all right, let me, let, let me, let me, let me, let me bring you in, boy. Let me bring this boy in. And the text says, he start putting on all Saul stopped putting all of these garments on him. And he, he, he's trying to wear it. But it, it's not him. Don't let nobody put something on you that's not you. One of the problems that you don't understand is that you are unique and different. Your anointing is not like mine. Don't try and be me. Try and work in the anointing that God called you. God has specifically assigned an anointing on you for this generation. Who am I talking to? The reason why you're still alive and COVID didn't kill you is because God has anointed you for a generation. Oh my God. I'm trying to put stuff on you. I, 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 I'm worried about this generation and some of you are older ones and don't have the problem, hopefully. But my generation, the younger generation, I'm, I'm, I'm worried because of, of social media and social media is wonderful, but there's a problem with it because everybody's comparing each other. 
and everybody's looking for likes and, 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 and following and to go viral. And the problem with that is whilst you're trying to look at somebody else, you're forgetting who you are and trying to pattern yourself after somebody else. Your fingerprint ain't the same fingerprint as me. Your looks ain't the same looks as me. Your anointing ain't the same anointing as me. Your talent ain't the same talent as me. God put you in the air for a purpose. So holler to your neighbor, say, be yourself. He turned around and said, I ain't, I, I ain't tried this thing. I don't know if it works for me. I, I can't put it on. I can't put it on. I can't put it on. But you know what? <laughs> I know what works for me. Yeah, yeah. Look at somebody say, I know what works for me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I know what works for me. And, 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 and one of the things that you got to understand is that, and I'm getting ready to close now. One of the things you got to understand about this fight that David was dealing with, he really was anointed for the fight. Yeah, he was anointed because David was a worshiper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what you don't realize is that the fight, the fight that you're going to read about, it started as a fight against another country. But you're going to watch how the fight switches. Because the Bible tells me that when David now approaches Goliath and Goliath sees David, he feels insulted. And the Bible tells me that he starts cursing and wondering if they think he's a dog. And then he goes on to say, the text says he gets so angry that he curses him by his God. Now, the fight switches. The fight would have been okay if he kept it a certain way. But now he says, I'm going to curse your God. Now, when that happens, God says, okay, now I have to come into this fight. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Are, are you listening to me? He should have never, ever, ever bring God in the situation. Some of you are about to win some battles because the devil called God in the situation. And, and now, I'm almost there. And now I know why, why David is there. Because we don't need just a warrior. Because the fight is not just an ordinary fight. It's switched to worship. So we need a worshiper. Where's my worshipers? Where's my worshipers? Where's my worshipers? Where is my worshiper? <laughs> uh, do me a favor. I feel like preaching. Pull that neighbor next to you. Say, neighbor, are you a worshiper? Because worship is about to win the battle. The devil hates worshipers. The devil hates when you open up your mouth. The devil hates when you give God glory. Somebody shout yes. Be seated. Be seated. I'm going to let you loose in a minute. <laughs> uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a fight for worship. It's a fight for worship. It's a fight for worship. And, and what, 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 what the devil didn't realize, one of the greatest worshippers is now in the battlefield. And people criticize you. Oh, you look too loud. Oh, why it doesn't take all of that, all of that shouting and screaming and hallelujah. Keep quiet. But they don't know worship does something. Worship, worship releases angels. Worship releases angelic forces. Woo! Verse 43. He said, the Philistines said, David, am I a dog that thou comest to me with sticks? That's another message in itself. The poor guy has eye problems. I won't go into that. But there's... There's an understanding that when you're of a certain height, certain posture, it affects 
your vision. He said, you come to me with sticks. And the Bible says, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Then David said, oh, you've now helped me. <laughs> then David said, okay. You say, here's what the Philistine said. He said, David, come to me and I will give your flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beast of the field. David said, shut up, shut up, boy. Shut up. This is a worship fight. You, you, you don't realize. He says, and, and then and he said, all right now, Philistine. He says, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield. You thought this fight was physical. This is a fight of worship. But I come to thee, oh God, in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Now, now, I'm about to close in now. I'm about to go touch your neighbor and say, we're going to close in on the devil now. We're going to close in. You all didn't say it. Look at some. Some say, we're going to close in on the devil now. <laughs> we're we're going we're to let him know he, messed, he shouldn't have messed with us. He shouldn't have been playing with us. He said, you come with a sword. Uh, yeah, yeah, come up, come, come. But, but I, I don't need sword for this fight. Because this is a worship fight. You switch the fight by bringing in worship into it. And I'm going to show you what worship. Come on, Jehoshaphat. Come on, bring the army. Bring the choir. Bring the choir. Because it's the sound of worship that's going to change the atmosphere. All right. All right. All right. Come. Come. You come with me a sword and a spear. But I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. Now, you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, Goliath, and this is what you got to understand, is that when you're dealing with an opposer, a, a spirit called Goliath, a giant spirit, the first thing that giant will always do is trying to predict your future. Can I tell you what Goliath's name means? It means soothsayer. Somebody say soothsayer. A person who predicts the future by magical intervention. These are soothsayers. I come against soothsaying spirits. Whoever told you you were going to die, I cancel death. It might be a doctor that's a soothsayer, but I cancel sickness. I can't. Oh, I don't hear nobody talk. Where's the worshipers? Where, where, I'm, I'm trying to cancel some stuff. One of the things you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, you can't allow people to speak into your life in this season. Death and life is in the power of their tongue. Now, now let me teach you something because we keep doing this and we do it wrong. We use this strength. No weapon that form against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises again. And sometimes we don't even finish the whole verse. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. But it says every tongue that rises against me, I'm supposed to condemn. Don't you speak that over my life. Don't you say that over my life. Somebody needs to cancel some assignment right now that the enemy has put over your life. The reason why some of you are sick it's come on, it's, when you went to the doctor and they said to you, you, you didn't feel no pain. And they saying, well, you got this wrong with you and you got that wrong with you. I'm not against doctors, but sometimes when they speak and say, no, that's not me. No, uh, 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 not me. Somebody else you're talking about. Uh, oh, you don't look well. I cancel that. I'm well. Oh, you look like you're really going to die. No, I am not dying. I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the works of who am I talking to? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I preaching to? Look at your neighbor and say, don't let them speak over you like that. Yeah, no, no, say it loud. Don't let them speak over you like that. Yeah, the devil is a liar. You're not going to die. You're not going to go down. You're not going to be broke. You're not going to lose your house. You're not going to lose your job. I'm here to tell you, God is about to turn it around for your good. Can 
I get about 50 people just scream, hey! I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Soothsayer. People who are being speaking over your future. People are talking about what you can do and what you can't do. Oh, you ain't educated enough. Shut up. You ain't got the power to tell me what I can do. Oh, well, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. He says, I am going to kill you. David says, oh, stop. I am going to kill you. And I love the text because I don't hear Goliath say anything else. David has the last word. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to get the last word out of here. I'm about to have the last word. I'm about to have the last word. I'm about to have. Somebody look at your neighbor one more time and say, it's a fight for worship. No, say it louder than that. Say, it's a fight for worship. You got to open your mouth. I told you last time I was here. I don't know if you were here the last time I was here. And I told you we're in the decade of the mouth. The Hebrew pay, which means mouth. Lord, have mercy. Closed mouth don't get fed. This is the season for you not to be quiet. Anything you don't like, your mouth is about to change it. Anything you're tired about, your mouth is about to change it. Death and life is not in the power of your hand or your foot. It's in the power of your tongue. And if you say it, it's going to come to pass. Somebody holler your neighbor and say, it's in your mouth, it's in your mouth. Say it again, it's in your mouth, it's in your mouth. This month we just entered Rosh Hashanah. It's the year of 5784. In the Hebrew, four is the number of open door. And everything that was closed in your life is about to open with your mouth. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm promised now. So, so David puts down all the armor, puts down all of the stuff that Saul's trying to give him. And then he says, let me use what works for me. Look at somebody say, use what worked for you. Stop trying to do what everybody else does. You are unique. Use the thing that works for you. Use the thing that works for you. Use it. So he comes. <laughs> and he's got his he's got his little bag. He picks up some smooth stones. He's got a sling. And he says, "All right." <laughs> and the giant's like, What's this idiot doing? Some of you look like idiots in front of giants, but giants, they die. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Come on, come on. Every demon should be scared when your hand goes up. Every demon should be scared when your hand goes up. And David doesn't wait for Goliath to come to him. He starts running. says that the stone sinked right in his forehead something's about to fall tonight some witchcraft demon power things that have been following you God sent you here to San Diego to the legacy center 
because whatever was born in you it ends tonight yeah I'm done I'm done um, the Bible says he falls he falls to the ground and um, the battle is a battle of worship and he told them that what you don't know you've already lost because I came in the name of of the Lord of hosts which means I don't have to fight one I'm just I, see what you got to understand about God is sometimes you think it's about what you've done God will make you think that sometimes he likes you to turn up he just wants you to show up and when you show up then he takes over to, to prove the point that David had nothing to do with the fight. It was the Lord of hosts. He throws the stone, hits him, and the Bible says that Goliath falls flat on his face. Something wrong with that. The laws of science is, if something approaches you in your forehead, you're supposed to fall backwards, not frontwards. But because the Lord of hosts was behind the fight he said I'm going to kick him down before the stone even hits his head and God says I told you this is a fight about worship I have to make sure that he doesn't fall backwards because he brought the fight as a fight that was connected to worship now the worship that the Goliath, the Philistines was Dagon so I am going to do what I did to him before when they put Dagon in my temple I'm going to show him that whenever he comes in my presence he has to bow because every knee must bow, oh God, oh God oh God, you're going to worship me the Bible says, the Bible says I read it to you they woke up the next morning, Dagon was on his face. They tried to straighten him back up again and the next time they found him back on his face, but this time his head was come off. So when David noticed that Goliath had died, I says, all right, this is a thing of worship. We got to take your head off now, just like we took the head off of Dagon. Because it's a fight that switched. It's now a fight about worship. Are you listening to me? And the devil should have never, ever attack you in the place of worship. That's why a tabernacle is a dangerous place. It's a place of worship. It's a place of protection. It's a booth. It's a shelter. Who am I talking to you? Who am I talking to rather? Anytime you're going through, God is going to shield you. Protect you. He's going to hold you. Are you with me on this? Every soothsayer. Every demon that has tried to predict your future. We're about to cancel it right now. Your shout didn't say anything. Now, now I want you to hear me because cause doors, remember we're in the season of open door. Now let me tell you something. Can, can I just tell you one more thing before I finish? When David had won the fight, <laughs> Saul said wait a second who, who boy is this who, whose boy is this they say hey it's, um, it's Jesse's Jesse's son you know what I was reading this I said wait a minute you don't even know who this guy is he's the guy that was playing music for you 
but somehow you can't even recognize him. When the anointing of the giant killer is on your life, people don't recognize you. You're the same one that comes to church praising God and they don't recognize you. Let me tell you, stop looking for people to recognize you. Just make sure that God recognizes you. Did you hear what I said? Make sure God recognizes you. Because guess what? Your anointing is going to bring you in places that other people cannot go. God always starts you off as a nobody, as a musician, as a singer, as a worshiper. And then when he's finished, he graduates you to the next dimension. And some of you in here, you're saying, nobody recognizes me. I, I don't understand. I got a ministry. And they don't, they're not supposed to recognize you. God is supposed to anoint you. God is supposed to bring you to a place of recognition. And I'm here to tell somebody in here that God has anointed you to be a giant killer. Look at somebody, look at somebody. Turn me up just one more time and I'm, I'm done. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm a giant killer. No, 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 no. Shout to the next person and say, I'm a giant killer. And every giant killer is a worshiper. Every giant killer must make some noise. Every giant killer must shout. Every giant killer, every giant killer can't be quiet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You see this? This is a representative of an Old Testament priest. <laughs> when he had to go into the place of the holies of holies, he had to be clean when he went to worship. And when he went to worship, ladies and gentlemen, they would not go into the place where he would go. He would go by himself and they would tie a rope around him and the rope would go onto the other side of the tabernacle and they would know that he's alive because at the bottom of his garment was bells. And the bells was to tell them that he was still alive. And any time the bell stopped ringing, they knew he was dead. Uh, we are royal priesthood. We're holy nation. And if you ain't saying nothing, if I can't hear some noise coming from you, it's a sign you're dead. It's a sign you're dead. But let the priest open their mouth. Let them shout. Shout your deliverance. Shout your breakthrough. Hold on. Hold on. I got two. One more thing and I'm done. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why your shout is important in this season. Not only because of biblically where we are, the month we're in. That's not only that, but sound has the power to destroy the prince of the air. Every time you make a sound, you disturb Satan in his atmosphere. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. I'm going to say this and I'm done now. Your shout is going to bring a deliverance that you need at home. Hold on, hold on. Everything that's gone wrong and everybody said, well, shout, ain't this too much shouting, too much this, please, please. God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Let me tell you, when Bartimaeus wanted a miracle, he could not see but he could hear faith doesn't come by seeing it come by hearing and Bartimaeus shouted until Jesus had to stand still and I was telling folks why did he shout but when you read the text the Bible says he was in a marketplace he was on the highway which was called Jericho 
And Bartimaeus must have heard that in the Old Testament, there was a man named Joshua that shouted and when he shouted, the walls came down. I want you to know you're in the season of Jericho. You're in the season, whatever is in your way, it's about to come down. Shout! 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 Oh! Atalabo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Giants are dying, giants are dying. Giants shout, shout, shout. Shout at the back, shout at the back, shout in the middle, shout at home. You're watching me on Facebook, you're watching me on YouTube, shout, shout. Your situation is turning around, your giant is about to die. This is a fight of worship, it's a fight of worship, yeah. I want to do two things. Nobody leave, else you're going to miss out on, an, on a great anointing that's about to hit this auditorium. There are some people right now in this building. You're facing a giant. It's a soothsayer. It's a demon that keeps telling you what's going to happen to your life. It's a soothsaying giant. And God told me to tell you that he is about to allow and you to experience tonight everything that's been opposing you. It's going to die tonight. Your shout ain't loud enough. Your shout ain't loud enough. Listen, 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 listen. Well, someone gonna say, "Oh, Bishop, that's brutal. That's so brutal." Could it, could it not, die? could it not live? I, I don't want nothing that's trying to kill me to live. If you don't kill it, it's gonna kill you. And I'm not talking about killing a person, but I'm talking about killing the spirit. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, power, spiritual wickedness that is in high places. Every demon must die. I want to. This this is not for everyone. So don't 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 invite a demon in your life. Well, I just want Bishop to pray for me. I'll pray for you in a minute, but I specifically want to talk and pray with people say, Bishop, I'm under some mad attack. It's a soothsaying spirit. If you didn't preach to anybody, you preached to me. There's a pastor in here. There's a pastor in here. You survived COVID, but there's a giant that didn't die with COVID. It was hard before COVID. Now it's even more hard. And the Lord told me to tell that pastor, your problem is you keep preaching about the problem. The Lord just told me to tell that pastor, stop preaching about what you see. Preach what you don't see. See revival. Preach revival. See the glory of God. Preach the glory of God. Because this fight is not a physical fight. It's a fight that switched to worship and the fight is to stop you from worshiping and looking at the problem and talking about the problem would you come I want to pray with you quickly I want to pray with those people quick 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 I got I got time I got I got I got time I, I got, come 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 
Remember, I'm talking to specific people. The rest of you, don't worry. Well, I wish you'd call out my name for something. Don't worry about that. God is fixing some things right now. Come with your hands lifted up. David had his hands 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 up. Had his hands up. He had something in his hands. Now, while I was preaching, you were shouting a whole lot, but nobody knows. Because even before COVID, when I was talking about this leader, it's you. Even before COVID, the enemy had tried, but he has not won. But the Lord told me to say, stop worrying about, and it's easy for me to say, stop worrying about what you see in the natural and start praising God for what you see in the spiritual because guess what? The devil don't fight people unless he's intimidated. And there's an intimidation that the enemy... Oh, shut up. Hold on, answer. There is an intimidation that the devil has. But guess what? I see you already winning. I see. Can somebody shout for him now? Somebody... Hey! Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. I might not be able to touch everybody, but I'm, I, there's a wind of the Holy Ghost. There's a, there's a wind of the Holy Ghost. Re, re, as I, all I have to do is point at you. Shut up, oh, Ramanta. Somebody get behind him because I feel the glory is about to hit him. The glory of God is about to hit your life. There it is. Hey, Shete, Oman. There it is. There it is. There it is. Woo. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. You've been asking for it. God going to do it. You came here for something. You're not going to leave here the same way you can. Now the glory is about to hit your life. There it is. Receive it. There it is. Woo. Woo. Are you ready? Some of you think I need to touch you, but glory is up here. Can I get somebody who pray, who, who's going who's to praise him for what's about to happen? Everyone on you this row, everyone, everyone's going to deal, God's dealing with your family. God says by the time you get home, the foolishness that will happen in your home is about to change. Situation's going to change. Are you ready? Watch it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. There it is. Receive it. Receive it. Receive that. That. Oh. Receive it. Receive it. Receive. Receive. Receive it. Yes, God. Woo! There it is. There it is. There it is. There, 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 there. Receive, receive, receive. I want somebody to shout right now. Shout right there, there. Receive it. Receive it now. Receive it now. It's yours now. There. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Bashaya. Receive it right now. That, hey, oh. Come on, shout for him. Shout for him. Oh, oh, my shit. You will never be the same again. You will never be a dead, 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 dead. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. That man, that man with the ear, you, sir, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Is he listening to a translator? Can you understand me? Can he understand me, whoever's translating for him? You hear me? Lift your hands. I saw angels standing next to you. And the Lord told me to tell you, you are not alone. It's been a hard season, but the season is about to change from tonight. Won't somebody shout for somebody else's blessing? And I hear the Lord say, wow, wow. I hear the Lord say, 
that you are about to exit a door. Doors are symbolic of opportunities. A door is something you either go into or you come out of. God says you're coming out of chaos and you're walking into an opportunity of blessings like you've never experienced before. And God told me to tell you, take it. Receive, receive, receive. Somebody shout for him. Somebody shout for him. Shout, shout. Belly shall flow. Yes. Somebody praise him. Take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Ho! Oh! Everybody in this building, I dare you open up your mouth one more time and say, I receive, I receive. It's about worship. 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 <laughs> it's about worship. My soul magnified. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. Ella Bahushaya. I worship you. Everybody, you are here turning lives. Turning lives around. I worship I worship you, hey. I worship you. Turn that situation around. Everybody say, come on. We make a miracle work. Come on. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you. You may go back to your seats. Don't leave. Just go back to your seat and say you are way. Come on. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. Everybody lift your voice and say, Waymaker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. Lift your voice and say, He's a way maker, a way maker, way maker, way maker, way maker. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it for you. He's going to do it. Going to do it. Way maker, way maker. Everybody say, way maker. That is who you are. 
If you believe that, give him the biggest, the loudest shout and praise you can give him. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, ah, ah. I just love the praise that's coming here. Somebody give God a clap, a shout, a praise one more time. Be seated for a moment. Be seated for a moment. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yeah. Yes, God. Look at somebody say, the devil is in trouble. My worship just massacred the enemy, just destroyed the enemy. It just messed up the enemy's plan. Somebody's about to see a financial turnaround, a, a miracle, a healing. Something is turning. I dare you turn, turn. Get around, turn one time. Everything in your life is about to turn around. Now shout for your turnaround. Hallelujah. Um, you may be seated. I don't know if some of you remember me. I don't know if some of you remember me in the... Was it in the... Let me see. Was it in 2000? I can't remember. I can't remember now. I, I, I was on TBN. I used to be on TBN. And um, I got on there one time. I came up to California with the late... Paul Crouch doing telephone and when I did telephone I was on just before Pastor Benny Hinn and he was downstairs and I was talking, preaching and he came up and he's like who are you? and you know how he is and um, long and short of it he invited me on this is your day and I don't know if you remember um, I got on there for the first time I didn't know what to say and um, I was talking about the woman with the issue of blood and I was talking about the prayer shawl um, some of y'all don't know it's probably me that started this whole re resolution about the prayer shawl and Pastor Benny was so moved by my teaching he took me to Israel and I was teaching it in Israel I was really frightened when I went to Israel because I'm thinking my gosh, these are Jews. They know more than me. What am I talking about? And what was so moving when I finished speaking, one of the Jewish guys afterwards, he said to me, all my life I have been using the prayer shawl, but you brought a revelation I never knew so much about. For those of you that don't know, this prayer shawl in the Jewish culture this is what they wear for prayer but it, it, it goes right back to the time of the tabernacle because they would have covering which this is known if you didn't know another word for the prayer shawl is a little tent little tabernacle the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus's garment and, and, and she did something which was revolutionary because she was doing it because she had a revelation that Malachi said that the son of righteousness shall arise the way you will identify. This was the last prophetic word. You will identify him is the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Another word for the word zitzit, which is a part of the prayer, is wings. So when the woman with the issue of blood went and touched Jesus' hem, his wings, she knew prophetically that healing should be hers. That's why Jesus said, somebody touch me. The blue thread is, is, is symbolic of the commandments of God, the word of God. Jesus said, somebody touch me. He said, no, the people are thronging you. She said, no, 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 no. 
Somebody touch me. What she literally did was touch him because you think the word was only the flesh. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Then the word took on flesh. So the word don't have to be a flesh thing. Anything can be the word. Oh. When Peter stepped out of the boat, he confused the whole of science because he started stepping on water, which according to science shouldn't happen. But he didn't step on water, he stepped on the word. The word was come. The word said come. And when the word says something, you can step on it and have a manifestation. Faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So, 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 so. Do you remember in the Old Testament when the prophet was trying to curse God's people? And the Bible says that when he began to look, he saw them all in tents. And every time he tried to curse them, he ended up blessing them. What people don't realize, and I'm going to say this in this, I've got a book, if you go on Amazon or somewhere, it's called Talitha Kuma, it's still, it's still around, a good book that teaches you about the prayer shawl. Sometimes I see people, how they operate with prayer shawls. I get nervous and you upset the Jewish community because for them, it's a holy, holy garment. I remember when I was writing the book, I spoke to my local rabbi and he disagreed with me when I was writing the book because he said women in the culture was not allowed to go anywhere where this was. And I was writing in my book that the girl was wrapped in a prayer shawl and he was saying that that would never happen. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's messing up my book. And so I didn't know what to do because I used him for reference every time, my local rabbi. And the next week he came back, he said to me, you know, what you put in your book, it bothered me. So I had to go back into my library and begin to search. And I found out what you said was truth. He said, I did not know because in our culture, we refuse women from having a prayer shawl. And I said, what you go and understand, you're thinking Old Testament, but for us, this is a dwelling place. This is the secret tabernacle. This is where we hide. This is our place of worship. If you can't have a room in your house, but you have a... He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I shall abide under the shadow of the almighty there is a place that you can be that the enemy cannot trouble you I believe this is the great season right now for every one of you I know you've given but I need you to do this how much you say these are they're free okay all right hundred dollars won't kill you this is a moment this is a moment right now where I'm going to tell you that this is the season to get a shawl and dedicate it to God and I'm going to prophesy to you that you're going to see that listen God's word can't lie you're in the season of the open every time you pray even if you've done wrong this is going to be your covering remember the prophet tried to curse them but he couldn't he said when he saw them in tents he couldn't curse them he had to bless them this is a protection now I'm not doing nothing funny or saying anything I'm talking about there are principles that God uses in the Bible and if we move within those principles we will see things done I'm going to finish with this when I preached that message on Benny Hinn I'll never forget that people started buying I think he, over a million prayer shawl 
And it, everybody would start talking after that about prayer shawl. Everybody was talking about it. And I had to write a book about it because people was asking me. And I went to a meeting. Oh, hallelujah. I lie not to you in Philadelphia. It was a conference called Praise Power. And I was preaching. And I was preaching for the first time, Talitha Kumai. I talked on television, but I'm preaching it. And while I was preaching it, they told me there's a woman who has cancer and she's in a wheelchair and she needs prayer. I like brought her to the front and I preached Talitha Kuma, rise up. And I said, God, I just finished preach this message and I want you to prove to everyone in this auditorium that you're a healer. And I took the prayer. And I wrapped her in a prayer shawl just like I was taught it. And I said, Talitha Kumai, God said arise. And that woman, I tell you no lie, came out of the wheelchair, began to walk, couldn't walk at all, started to run around the building. Then I saw an angel move from one side of the auditorium to that other side. And I said, everyone that praises God and go to that side, there's an angel there. Begin to praise him. Miracles started to happen. People started to get healing. Blind eyes started to open. Things started to manifest. And the glory of God happened in that meeting. The next year, this lady's on YouTube somewhere testifying. The next year she came back completely, completely, completely whole and strong and brought all the paperwork from the doctor that said they cannot find no cancer in her system. I wish I had somebody who believes in someone believe in miracle. I can tell you a story again. There was another guy um in a place called Poplar Bluff, you know that? Somewhere Poplar Bluff, just outside um, Missouri somewhere, I think. Uh, I was preaching and I had my prayer shawl and the pastor took the prayer shawl and went to the hospital. A guy who, every limbs broke, some kind of stuff, they didn't say he's no way he's gonna make it. And they took my prayer shawl and put it over the guy. The power of God touched him and next day he came out of the coma oh god i want you to know he got completely healed within 24 hours somebody don't believe in miracles if you believe it you would shout something i want every one of you that can get a seed of a hundred dollars every one of you every one of you every one of you I'm going to do the same thing. I don't tell people to do something that I don't do. I want you to get a seed of $100. Do this. And, and, and I, want to, I want to believe God. Where are they? Where are they? Okay. You're going to leave it. Yes. They can use the QR code. Let's do this. Let's do this. I like this one. Some of y'all need some blankets. This, I mean, you're giving and you're also getting something back. That's good. The Bible says better, better, best to give than to receive. But this ministry is so good. They're giving you something back. Alpha and Omega, Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Word of God, the Day Spring. Look at this. Son of God, Emmanuel. Oh, gosh. And, and if they sow, how much for this? 300 oh wow that's a that's a blessing that's a blessing all right okay are you going to do that are you all going to do that i want everybody hallelujah someone say well bishop i don't need a prayer show i just need to give to god you know some of you just just need to give to god and then you know that god i believe that, that there are some people in here who god is talking to you to make a sacrifice of a thousand dollars I want to especially pray for you. You're going to do, it's, 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 it's a gift you want to give to God. If you're in this building and you want to sow a special gift of a thousand dollars, I'm praying for everybody, but I especially want to pray for you. Somebody saying, Bishop, I need a miracle and I'm going to use this seed. People turn around and say, oh, all of these things about seed. It's in your Bible. The Bible says, 
Our Bible is written from an agriculture perspective and everything about our Bible is about seed, time, and harvest. It says, while the earth remain, there will be seed, time, and harvest. The Bible talks about whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I don't know who's in here who say that, Bishop, I'm gonna, I want to sow that thousand and I'm believing God. Thank you, thank you. Is there anybody else? Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Three, thank you. Four, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Five, thank you. W would you do me a favor? W come down here. I want to I wanna, I wanna decree some, decree some things. And I want those of you that haven't got a thousand to still get happy for those who have because God's going to bless you. You said you want this one. How do we do this? How are we going to do it? All right. <laughs> come, 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 come. I thought you had some here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We make a miracle. You got none here? This is it. Let me go. We'll ship it, but this is We have to keep it. All right. That is who you on is there anybody else and I, I want everybody else miracle promise keeper light in the that is get my wallet for me please everybody help me say way maker miracle worker promise keeper Everybody help me sing, baby. Help me sing it. Help, help me sing it. Stand. I'm going to pray over you. If those of you, those of you, those of you believe it, they're going to ship it to you. And I believe God is going to make. Thank you, Jesus. I worship. This is a moment. This is a moment. This is a moment. This is a moment. It's a moment of opportunity. It's a moment of opportunity. You met me today and said, you have some needs and I'm decreeing that God is going to meet your need. He's going to meet your need. She said, I receive it. I love that. Man of God, it's a turning point for you. The Lord told me to tell you the wait is over. Watch her, watch her. Quick, 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 quick. The wait, the wait is over. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. Father, we thank you. We anoint her to be a giant killer. We anoint her to be a giant killer. Giant killer. Giant killer, you will kill giants. No devil will stop you. Miracle signs and wonders as you kill every giant. Every soothsayer, nothing will stop you, nothing will hinder you. In fact, there's a glory on your life. Hey, how oh, shut up! Oh, man, you just put my money there. Oh, do it for her in the name of Jesus, do it for him. 
do it, do it. I rebuke everything that try to hinder you, stop you. We clean your house out. We clean your house out from every demonic attack. Everything that the enemy tries to do, we break it now. In the name of Jesus, there it is. Glory, 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 glory. We thank you now. God bless you. You can go back to your seats. Those with the 300, come quick. Let me just lay hands on you quickly. Quick, and then we're going to let you go. Come, come, come quickly. You've given $300. I mean, $100. Come, come quickly. $100. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly. Just, just come touch me and put it on the altar now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat when I touch you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Just touch me. Just touch me as I touch you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You will never be the same. Can I get somebody to watch this money and help me? God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You did it through the QR. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let me see if I can come down here a bit. Just as I touch you, go back, go back. Put that money on the offering, go back. Oh, oh! glory. Glory is upon you. God bless you. Put it on the altar. God bless you. Quickly do this fast. Move fast. Move fast. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do it for him. Do it for him. Put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. I touch you. Go back to your seat. Let somebody else get a touch. Let somebody else get a touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your miracle. Thank you for your breakthrough. Oh, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you. There it is. Touch him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, touch her. Touch her. Touch her now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. God bless you. Put it on the altar. Hallelujah. Move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. As you move, God will move on your behalf. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. I can move quickly. You move quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you,
on, I think somebody ought to tell Bishop John Francis how blessed you were tonight. Come on, give honor to whom honor is due. How many giant killers in the house tonight? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Now listen, tomorrow is going to be an incredible doubleheader. Listen, whatever plans you have for tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, those of us that are from this local area, you need to be here. Tomorrow morning, one of the most anointed, prophetic, gifted communicators you will ever hear in your life. You will never see an illustrated message like the illustrated message you're going to see tomorrow morning with the one and only Pastor Steve Muncie. He pastors a little church of about 20,000 people outside of Chicago. There is such a gift in his life for discerning the seasons and the times, and he's coming with a word from the Lord that you will not hear anywhere else but here tomorrow. So just make your plans to be here. Doors open at 8.30, and then tomorrow night, the incredible Io Aritza Jafor will be in the house. You have never heard anybody preach like this. An amazing Feast of Tabernacles doubleheader. Paul Wilbur, uh, Brandon will be in the house. Come on, somebody give Paul and Brandon a good God bless you. So early morning prayer, 6.30 tomorrow here in the theater. 7.30 breakfast will be here at 8.30. Now listen, Teresa's restaurant is staying open until 10 o'clock tonight. So you've got about 30 minutes if you want to grab a burger, if you want to grab some whatever you would like to grab. They're open for another 30 minutes. So you just enjoy the presence of the Lord. Enjoy the campus. Somebody shout, I am a giant killer. Amen. The giants are coming down tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 6.30 prayer, 7.30 breakfast, 8.30. We're in here with Paul Wilbur, Brandon, and then the incredible, you have never seen or heard anybody like Pastor Steve Munson. You'll never be the same. Don't miss it. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' mighty name.